I loved Fangirl from start to finish. I loved everything about it. I loved the little fanfic bits. I loved the story. I loved the writing. I loved the characters. I loved it all. It was absolutely amazing. And those are my initial thoughts on Fangirl. It was awesome. It was amazing. It was a brilliant read. One of my top ones of the year. And if you haven't read it yet, you need to read it. I really enjoyed it. I um, have read a lot of books which are set at university and out of all those I've read I can't think of any which is set at a university quite like the one in Fangirl where there are people doing um, agricultural studies and that sort of thing as well as the um, kind of more traditional academic subjects. Um, I really liked all the characters, I thought they were very interesting and vivid and I really liked that there was a lot going on um, you know there were all the characters own individual issues um, as well as the general kind of romantic plot line and um, all the family stuff that goes on. I connected so well with Kath in this book um, I have bad anxieties, it's not something that I hide, it's something that I'm always very open about, especially on Twitter, and basically when I was at uni, it wasn't that, it, it works differently here in the UK, um, we have our own kitchen, but I would spend a lot of my time in my bedroom. I did try to open up a little bit more at uni, make new friends, get out there a little bit, but it was still incredibly hard, so I could see where Cathy was coming from, and if I'd had to go to like a big dining hall to eat I probably wouldn't have eaten or I would have gone and then quickly run back to the to the accommodation it's hard to sort of you know put yourself out there sometimes um so I definitely understood it from that section I mean I'm getting a bit better now but I remember being that way and not wanting to make friends and not wanting to put myself out there and then feeling like when you did put yourself out there someone or something went wrong and then you didn't want to ever do it again I totally connected with that for her and sympathised with her um, and I think that's one of the reasons Fangirl is so easy for me to enjoy because I just connected so well with the main character. I connected with all of the characters, I really liked all of them pretty much. They were just all really interesting and distinct. I think I particularly liked obviously Kath because she is the focus of the story. I could really relate to a lot of the stuff she goes through, you know, hiding in her room because she's afraid of going into the dining hall. Yeah, that would have been me. I was so scared of going and finding a table and sitting down by myself, you know, if I didn't have a friend who was going to be with me, that I just couldn't do it. I would just go and eat in blues or in a corner of the library somewhere under my coat or I'd go home and eat. I had this while I was doing my first degree. I would always go home and eat my lunch in my kitchen rather than have to go and buy some food and sit in the dining hall by myself. The whole way through my masters we always used to go get lunch together and it really helped. And now I have no problem. Now I'll just go sit anywhere by myself, really, cafe, restaurant, go to museums by myself all the time. I was also really intrigued by Ren and Regan, especially Regan because she feels sorry for Kath and she says as much so and she kind of tries to not bully but kind of harass Kath in coming up for Shell and being a bit bolder. Um, I have to say that one of my favourite things about the story was the Simon Snow extracts, uh, the fangirl, the fan fiction bits. Um, I really, really like that. I know a lot of people dislike that about this book and find that it disconnects them from the story or I don't know why else they don't like them. But I really, really enjoyed it. But then I also used to write fan fiction and read fan fiction. And so I really connected and understood what was going on and why I was writing it and feeling like I was like there. And I really liked the Simon Snow extracts as well. It was like, sounded like a really good book. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I really liked that aspect. It made the book 
just a little bit different from just your normal average contemporary book. It gave it something a little bit more and I really like that about it. I mean there are obviously other scenes and stuff that I really liked in the in the book but I don't want to spoil too much so I'm just going to say that the extracts were something that I just really really enjoyed seeing in this book. I thought sometimes it kind of got a bit long-winded and there are periods where not very much happened but I think that was only for a couple of chapters. Overall I really enjoyed the book and I don't mind that they're, they were there, you know, because it just means more book. Yes! I really liked Simon Snow. I got completely addicted to the story and even the fan fiction, and I wanted to read the story even <laughs> though it doesn't exist. So, yeah, I really liked that about it. Um, Obviously it was supposed to be Harry Potter, but then there was a mention of Harry Potter in, in the story as well and I thought that was really cleverly done. And yeah, I just thought it was a nice little extra thing to the story that just I really enjoyed. I thought it was really good. I especially liked the bit where with the rabbit. That's what I'm going to say. If you've read it, you understand what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you don't. But yeah, I just, I like the Simon Snow extracts and all the extra little bits. It just made it more enjoyable for me. Gave it that something extra. So, yeah, that was oh my god, I love the Simon Snow bits. Uh, if the Simon Snow books were real, I'd read them in a heartbeat. I would. I would. They just, they're so, they're kind of funny because it's like Harry Potter but it's not like Harry Potter at the same time and it's quite witty. I'm not a Harry Potter fangirl as such but I do love the world of Harry Potter. I have read some fan fiction in the past and I was so excited when I went on the studio tour. And if I had lots of money, I would buy lots of merchandise, lots of money, and lots of space. And I do have the Monster Book of Monsters, because a friend gave it to me. So, books that I would recommend, having read Fangirl, um, naturally I'm going to recommend her other books, Ray Morale's other books, even though I personally haven't read them, so I don't know how I can recommend them, but because her writing is so good, I can just imagine that it trans bias really well across all genres. Um, also just for YA contemporary books that I really really you would really really enjoy any Sarah Dessen books. I think Sarah Dessen's an amazing YA contemporary writer. Uh, also um, John Green and David Leverton, also brilliant brilliant authors of YA. Um, also um, yeah I don't know just just there's not really much I just really really like it. <laughs> It's hard to recommend books because it's so unique in itself, but really if you're just looking for anything, what any YA contemporary, um, I think you've, you'll have you hit the nail on the head and it, it, you know, if it's something that you enjoy, then you'll enjoy it. This is a bad recommendation, so don't, just basically just read Fangirl and that'll be it. Just read Fangirl, okay? I suppose Adorkable by Sarah Manning is also about online life and how it um, affects offline life. The main character is a blogger and she's really successful and has a lot of followers on Twitter. She kind of relies on them for all her social contact, much like Kaf does in Fangirl with her fans and other fan fiction writers.